So this week we're in Sarajevo, and boy, let me tell you, does this city have a bunch of stories to tell. From the excitement of the 84 Olympics, to the meeting of Eastern and Western cultures, to the horrors of war. We were left speechless more than once by everything that Sarajevo has to offer. So in this video, we'll share with you 20 things to do in Sarajevo, including the place that had the biggest impact on us. So you will know what to expect and know how to make the most out of your time in this fascinating city. All in this episode of Lucas World Travel. So welcome to Sarajevo. We're in Sarajevo, Bosnia and Herzegovina for seven days. So Sarajevo is a historically important city. Uh, a lot has happened here. Not all good, unfortunately. Just for instance, did you know that World War I was started right here in this city? So there's a lot to learn about this city. You can learn a lot from the past. Traveling is the best education. Now Sarajevo has some of the most impactful museums that we've ever been to. Some of our favorites include the Sarajevo Museum, which documents the rule of the Austria-Hungarian monarchy in Sarajevo up until the assassination of Franz Ferdinand, that event that sparked World War I. It's a small but fascinating museum that is definitely worth a quick stop. There's also a War Childhood Museum which displays ordinary objects with powerful stories about what it was like growing up during the Sarajevo siege of the 1990s. Now the museum that had the biggest effect on us was the Crimes Against Humanity Museum. This museum was heavy, but so informative. It was a lot of information and very intense personal stories and it kind of wears you down a little bit. So the message of the uh, museum is just to educate so that we don't repeat these mistakes of nationalism, of fighting wars and dividing people. And our last impactful museum was the Sarajevo Tunnel. So when you watch the video, you see how the tunnel was just functional but not comfortable. You would have to walk through, bent down, and the tunnel would leak, so you would have to walk through muddy water. But that's how they got supplies through, how they got people through, how they got weapons through during the siege of Sarajevo. A siege that lasted a full three years. Oh, uh, this was very eye-opening. It shows me that people under extreme pressure trying to find a solution always find an answer. When they weren't getting help, they had to be able to find solutions for themselves. The help eventually came, but it came three years late. Although I can't say going to war museums is particularly fun, I will say that these four museums really brought the history of these wars to life because you can hear about the war from the survivors and from the victim's perspective. The stories will impact you so much more than when you hear them from a history book. These museums feel alive with a message too powerful to ignore that hopes that we will not forget the crimes of the past and that we will never fight against one another again. Next, you have to see Sarajevo's historic center. We took a walking tour with Addis, and we can highly recommend it to get an overview of the best sites of the city. So this is Sibeli, the symbol of the old town. It is a fountain, and in the past, people used to come here to wash before they would do their prayers at the mosque. It's also known for having hundreds of pigeons, and it's fun to feed them when you have some leftover breadcrumbs. There's also a coppersmith street where you can see several craftsmen shops with handmade copperwares. Next is the beautiful city hall, which has such a unique creation story, complete with a negotiation battle between one man versus the entire Austria-Hungarian empire. 
the Austrians took over around 1878 and they wanted to build a big new city hall to show how powerful they were and they wanted the spot across the river. Now, this house used to be on the other side of the river. So they came to him wanting to give him ridiculous amounts of money to get that land. But he already had plenty of money, liked his house, didn't want to leave. So he made it really hard, asked for a bag of gold, and asked them to move his house brick by brick to this location. So that is what they did. The house is now a restaurant and it's called the Stubborn House. Sarajevo is really full of interesting stories like that. It's also nice to walk the riverfront to see all of the beautiful bridges, buildings, and artwork that hang across the river. Unfortunately, during our stay, excessive rain led to some flooding. It's been raining constantly for the last couple of days. This has probably been the only time this actually stopped raining. And so now look at the river now. You don't want to end up in that mud bath right there. So now we're at the Orthodox Cathedral Church of Theotokos, but it really is lovely. They have all the gold-plated paintings and beautiful mosaic tiles and painted ceilings everywhere. So it is worth going to check out. And if you're lucky, you might catch some locals outside having a game of chess. Next, you can make a quick stop at the Eternal Flame which is a memorial to commemorate the fallen soldiers of World War II. Next, we're heading to the Catholic Cathedral. Now, they request that you don't take pictures or video inside the cathedral, but the outside's very lovely. In Sarajevo, they love that Pope John Paul II came to the city. Over 70,000 Bosnians came to Sarajevo when the Pope came. They were so excited, and they erected a statue to him in front of the cathedral. You can also check out the Ghazi Mosque, which has a lovely courtyard and fountain to see. One of the most interesting parts of the historic center is the meeting of Eastern and Western cultures, where you can clearly see the Eastern influence of the Ottoman Turks on one side of the line and the Western influence of the Austria-Hungarian Empire on the other side. Never has the historical influences of a place been more clear than in this spot in Sarajevo. So try to stand here for a minute or two and really appreciate the contrast. For traditional Bosnian food at affordable prices, try ASDZ a cafeteria that has loads of rotating options. So here we have a cheese burette and a sample of their different vegan options. We got cabbage and beans, potatoes and cream beans, and a bunch of bread. So they really do have a lot of different meat options, but I'm trying to eat vegetarian these days. So I just got the veggie plate. And really the cabbage and the beans really have a lot of nice rich flavors. Good comfort food here. But by far the best food that we had in Sarajevo was at a vegetarian restaurant called Caruso. I can easily say I'm eating the best vegan risotto of my life. So many flavors. It's delicious. It's very flavorful. Mm. It's very good. And we enjoyed the food so much, we even got dessert, which we never do. So this is a raw vegan cheesecake. Fantastic. So if you like vegan and vegetarian food, we can highly recommend this restaurant. Currently, they're by reservation only, and it's definitely worth making a reservation. To get the best views in Sarajevo, you want to go to two different places, the White Fortress and the cable cars. So now we're taking the 52 bus to the White Fortress. So after 
after a quick bus ride for one mark 60, we now are walking about eight minutes up the hill to see the fortress. And we have two black cats as companions. I think they want to go see the fortress too. So they start building this white fortress in the Middle Ages but they continue reconstruction during the Austria-Hungarian times in 1878. Now it's mostly in ruins, but it's an interesting piece of history with great views. and we finally have some good weather. Our friend recommended that we go take the lift up the mountain to see the views of the city. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Enjoy the view. Now there must be a gun range nearby because we hear gunfire all the time out here. So it's really eerie and really freezy, especially because we've been on a thousand war tours. <laughs> so we're like, what's going on? But it seems peaceful. Everybody's chilling, so it should be okay. At the top, you can also walk to see the abandoned bobsled track that they used in the 1984 Winter Olympics. It has now turned into a massive graffiti wall. And it's nice to walk through it and just admire the skill of this track. We were lucky that by the time we were ready to come down the mountain, it was sunset and we got to see the gorgeous colors of the setting sun over Sarajevo for one last time. Lastly, Sarajevo also has a lively nightlife scene and we were happy to learn that they had salsa dancing several nights a week. This was their Wednesday night social. So this is how nice people in Sarajevo are. The lady sitting next to us just gave us a pair. <laughs> They're trying to feed us <laughs> while we're riding the bus. How sweet is that? So we're staying in Sarajevo for seven nights and I wanted to show you our accommodation that we found on Airbnb this time. So it has a small but modern kitchen with a full oven and the fridge is nicely hidden in the cabinetry. In the living area, we have a dining table and that sofa looks super comfy and a TV. So we're gonna enjoy lounging here. And the bathroom has a washing machine, a nice shower, sink, and naturally a toilet. And then the bedroom looks like a nice king size bed. And we have a balcony, which David is already out enjoying. You can see it's a very gray and rainy day, but that's okay, rain has to come sometime. And we got one little chair out here. So we got this place for $395 a week on Airbnb. So I hope you enjoyed this tour of Sarajevo. Up next, we're going to Belgrade, Serbia. So make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell for more travel ideas for your next trip.
And if you haven't checked out our journeys through Slovenia and Croatia yet, you can check those out on the videos on the side there. As always, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you again next week. And follow us on Facebook and Instagram to see where in the world we are currently and to get even more full-time travel tips and inspiration.